Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero, and welcome to Cavrillo, which is a horror game where you wake up one night to encounter a home evader who also happens to be a goo man or monster. What is your name? Manly. You wake up to a loud crash downstairs. Sounds like something broke. If you could blame this on a pet or a sibling, that would be great as you can go right back to sleep. Unfortunately, you live entirely alone. You have no choice but to check it out. I do actually go back to sleep. Nice. It's probably nothing. You just close your eyes and doze off. You don't wake up again. I don't. Ending one, instant death. Go downstairs. You climb out of bed with your phone and fetch the baseball bat out of your closet for good measure. You make your way downstairs, pretty confident in your ability to maneuver through the house in the dark. But the minute your foot touches the bottom of the stairs, you find it. Stuck in something. Stuck at something? No matter how much you pull, something around your shoe only pulls back. You're scared to put your other foot down, and you're unable to walk any further to turn the living room lights on. What now? Use your phone's flashlight. Well, we'll kind of go for all these, just out of curiosity. You hold your phone in front of you and activate the flashlight, illuminating your surroundings. You weren't sure what you were expecting, but... So this is the word I've never encountered before. I threw it into Google, and I think it might be Romanian. So this will be a first, I think, for a game I've played. I, it might be said Awolu? Awolu? Awolu! It is indeed a whole ass man in front of you. You notice whatever you were stepping on retreat and crawl away from you. Wait, I was stepping on that? You take the opportunity to swing the bat right for his head. Smack. The man collapses. What happens if you don't move and stay silent? If you don't move, nothing will happen, right? Nothing will notice you. At least that's what you hoped. You don't move a muscle, but it feels like something else is. Whatever was under your shoe was creeping around over it, moving further up, slivering around your leg, torso, and arms. You swear under your breath and accidentally drop your bat to fill your arms. Try to shake off whatever was on you. You only persist, however, spreading fervent until it covers every surface inch of your body. This is getting weird. By the time your brain successfully registers you are in real danger, the unknown substance covers your mouth and drowns out your screams. Oddly enough, you don't feel any pain. You can't feel anything. Everything is numb. You eventually lose consciousness. Ending one. Instant death. I guess every time you die, it's gonna be like that. Say something. Hey, whoever's out there, get the hell out. Please? There's a moment of silence after you kind of stupidly called out to whoever or whatever it could be in your house. The silence is broken by a chuckle heard not so far away from you, only confirming your worst fear. What now? Yeah, so you do have to use your flashlight no matter what. Black. He wakes back up in the dining room. <sighs> I'm alive. He seems pleasantly surprised. You weren't exactly looking to commit manslaughter, but if you swung any harder and at the right spot, you might have. Fortunately for him, you're more curious for answers than anything. He may just have to live with the concussion for a bit. Can I get a concussion? You observe him silently as he takes his time to fully wake up and process a predicament he's in. He struggles to move where he is, Thanks to the zip ties around his wrists. You must really want to talk to me. Are you lonely? What the hell are you talking about? No. You took the time and tie me up. Didn't you? If I didn't, you would still be doing God knows what in my house. Doing weird stuff. But I'm still in your house. This guy sucks. Why haven't I called the cops yet? You fiddle with your phone in your lap, hoping the stranger doesn't notice. Let's go back to the other option. Maybe. Ah, so you are. Well, I'm here to keep you company. If you untie me, I'm sure I can reward your honesty. What kind of reward? 
There's only one way for you to find out. Okay, that's where it branches. Not happening. <laughs> that's too bad. People say I give amazing hugs. Are hugs a reward? I don't think I want that. There's only one way for you to find out. Okay, then the cops dialogue. You're going to call the cops, aren't you? I'm surprised you hadn't already. You really are lonely. God, he just keeps on talking. You look down at your phone as you're so close to dialing 911. So close. But if you did, you wouldn't be able to find out what's wrong with this guy. Why is he- Why he's in your house of all places? You should just get the flamethrower out, man. Clearly this is the goo from Prometheus. So you put the phone down. Wise decision, my friend. Huh. I guess I can't call you my friend yet, if I don't know your name. If this stranger was going to entertain your questions, you figure the last thing you should do is make him upset. It's Manly, not us here. Well, Manly, I'm Gabriel. I would love to shake your hand right now, but, well... I don't think I want to touch your hand after seeing all that nasty shit around you. Or from you? I think I stepped in that. What part of you did I step on? You shudder at the idea of that stuff being inside him. Oh, don't mind all that. It's hard to explain what it is, really. But you don't have to worry about it, for as long as I am satisfied. Promise. These are some... This, this game is going in a direction. I don't have to worry about that because you're tied up, right? That is true. I guess I can still show you what it is, even in this uncomfortable position. Show you? You shake your head. No, no, that's not necessary. You don't have to show me that goopy stuff again. Just tell me about it. What is it? Let's go back to the other choice. Are you satisfied right now? You have a feeling you know the answer to this already. It would be more satisfying if you untied me. This position is very uncomfortable. Wait, I can... Oh boy. Don't. Call the cops now. Yeah, uh, let me just get some scissors in the other room. I'll be right back. Other room. Manly, there are already scissors in this room. I can see them right there. Oh! Ha ha! You're right. Let me... Let me just, you know, Looney Tunes out of here. Get those in. Your heart is pounding. You did not think that through. Wait, why are you so nervous? It's not like you can do anything tied up like that. He is literally made of goo. You're perfectly safe. Aren't you? You take a deep breath and get up. Or try to, anyway. Your feet can't move. Wait, hold on. You look under the table and at your feet only to see that pitch black mass crawl towards you. It slides under your shoes and curls around them. And then up your legs! You begin to kick at them in a panic and attempt to get up from your seat. But you're stuck. What the hell, man? I'm trying to get the scissors! How are you doing that? Stop! I think you know what to do to make it stop. No, you can't let him scare you like this. You grab for your phone and immediately dial 911. You continue to kick at the mass in the process. Hello, pl hey, it's, he's gone. Hello, police? Please help. There's an intruder in my house. You are so focused on the phone and on the black sludge making its way up your body, you don't even notice Gavriel right next to you, snatching the phone out of your hand. You're kind of like the, um... You know what I'm thinking of? You're the protagonist from that one game. It was kind of like you're playing, like, Carnage or Venom. It wasn't actually the characters, it was, uh... It was a, you, were, you were basically an anti-hero, but kind of a villain. It's part of that era where, um, there was a lot of superhero games. He's out of his restraints. He hangs up the phone call and drops the phone onto the floor. How did you... 
You will find out soon. What? You look down at yourself. Check to see the black mass has covered most of your body now, having reached your torso and creeping towards your neck. You try to move, but to your shock, you have lost all feelings in your limbs. It was hard to tell where they began or ended while well, coated like this. Everything felt numb. You're paralyzed, watching yourself slowly consumed by the substance. What is happening to me? You're helping in the grow, Manly. I guess this is another way to satisfy me. Or rather, it. Every cryptic explanation out of Gavriel makes you want to puke. You can't seem to feel your stomach anymore anyway. The mask reaches your face and continues to cover every surface inch of your head, muffling your pleas and obscuring your view of Gavriel. The feeling is suffocating, and you figure of the last moments of consciousness that you are no longer yourself. Heading to Delayed Fate. So I've gone back to this choice. Let's go back where I left off. Yeah, I already told you I don't know how to describe it. Here, just watch closely. Hold on. Watch. You look friendly around the room, unsure what to immediately expect. And then you realize... They're going to table see the... This seems kind of similar to the ever abandoning. At your feet only to see that the pitch black mass crawl towards you. It slides under your shoes and curls around them and then up your legs. Begin to kick them into panic and attempt to get up from your seat, but you're stuck. Stop! Get away from me! How are you doing that? Okay. Yeah, see the skip option came up? That was that option. Hold on. I don't need to be shown anything. You'll be satisfied if I untie you, right? Fine, I'll do just that. Oh... You're right. Yes. That would be perfect. This is for the best, you hope. You won't regret this, you hope even harder. You reluctantly get up to grab a pair of scissors and cut the zip tie around Gavriel's wrist. I think this is where the, the two routes kind of branch back in. He immediately stretches his arms above his head and takes off his hood to fully reveal his face. You look normal-ish. Ah, so much better. Thank you, Manly. If it's a chat you want, it's a chat you'll get. Cool, okay. I mostly just need to know. Why did you break into my house? A friend lent me here. We're both pretty hungry, so he might have smelled something good. I don't know where he's run off to, now that I think about. Wait, there's more of you? It's not comforting to know your house is a potential buffet. Oh, he and I are nothing alike. For one, he is a rat. A rat? You are friends of a rat? Wait, I remember you had a tail. Just like a rat. What are you talking about? He takes a moment to process what you might mean. Oh, <laughs> you mean my... That's not a tail. It's more like a furred arm. Not that there's anything wrong of tails, or, or rats having tails. So we'll do both choices, we'll do this one first. It's really weird, honestly, why do you need a furred arm? That sounds so wrong. Makes it easier to steal food. No? Yeah, you're not taking anything from my fridge, don't just steal anything. Especially at not after you broke that vase. You don't seem like someone who can pay that back. But... I haven't eaten all day. You'd said you'd keep me satisfied. And you promised you wouldn't be in trouble if I untied you. Which I did. So stop complaining. You untie me and leave me hungry. Are you sure about that, Manly? Huh? The more you think about it, you suppose the implications aren't exactly in your favor. Well... You're not a cannibal, right? I don't think we're the same species. No, I would not label myself as that. Fuck, he is one. Gavriel seems to read your mind as he watches you slowly get out of your seat. Oh god! Heading three. Ravenous. Let's go back to this choice here. Hey, don't worry, it's a nice look on you. Oh. Uh, thank you. 
It does make stealing food easier. Okay, and then the branches realign. You don't have to steal anything. Look, I'll get you something to eat, or I die. Maybe save some for your friend, too, wherever he is. You are too kind and manly. Yeah, you really are. What should you get for him? Jeez! Let's save that one. Fruit! You, you look like a fine fruit-eating person, carnivore thing. You head to the fridge to take out a bowl of fruit and sit on the table in front of Gavriel. He holds the apple in his hand and... Whoa, what the fuck? Uh, uh. His tongue lolls out to laver it in? The same black stuff that has been tormenting your curiosity all this time. It's such a gross sight, but you can't seem to look away. You watch the goo entirely coat the apple in a matter of seconds, it's gone. Gavriel withdraws his tongue back into his mouth. Why didn't you eat like a normal person? Who does a normal person? Apples are so hard to chew. It's easier this way. What about the banana? You want to watch me eat a banana? What? Oh, uh, never mind. Anyway, you actually use that black slime to eat things? Gabriel only grins back, answering your question. The only thing you can think about is how you were stepping on that stuff not too long ago. You could end up just like that apple. How does it work? Is it, like, acidic? Huh. No. I don't think it melts things exactly, but it kind of works like that. It's so hard to explain. I am not a scientist. But, my cousin is practically one, so I'm sure he would know. He is very smart. I'm assuming your family doesn't know about all this yet. A family... is a strong word. It isn't a strong word, that's literally what cousins are. Not in good standing with them, huh? I can see why. I don't think that's your business. You literally broke into my house. You're a felon. Of course your family doesn't like you. You aren't making chatting very fun. That is what you want to do. Yes. Look, I just don't see why I have to cater to you when you're the one trespassing on my property. Because you are afraid of me. Yes, I'm scared to death that you can eat me with your goop thing. I don't think I can learn anything more about that from you. So, how about you leave? Alright? Peacefully. We both have what we want. Now go. <sighs> That's fair. Pecorin. He gets up from the table and slowly makes his way to the front door. You breathe a sigh of relief. The hell is over. For a moment, anyway, before you black out from the swing of a baseball bat. You wake up to discover your wallet missing and your fridge ready to food. Ending 4. Robbed. Sorry, you're right. So all that slimy stuff, do you control it or...? Yes. It's been so useful to me. But it's hard to say if it is a tool or a friend sometimes. Peter, this guy has such a warped perception of friendship. For a moment, you entertain the idea to un unironically be his friend before you quickly snap yourself back to rationality. So, does it keep you company? Can you communicate with it? I'm not sure, honestly. It's not easy to tell if it can feel anything, but hunger. Wait, what? Manly, I have to go soon. I have a lot of traveling left to do. But I don't mind that I made a pit stop here for cheese. Alright, I won't keep you any longer. Gabriel gets up and makes his way to the front door. You watch him with an uneasy expression. But you suppose he has no reason to stay and continue to intimidate you. La Ravidere, manly. Maybe we'll cross paths again in the future. I wouldn't count on it. You nervously wake goodbye and breathe a sigh of relief knowing that hell will soon be over. You're shocked you're even still alive. First of all, you can finally go back to sleep. Ending 5. Spared. Offer cheese. You head to the fridge to take out a plate of cheese and set it on the table in front of Gavriel. He immediately lunges for it to dig in. 
Oh, I love cheese. How did you know? Just a hunch. In an instant, the cheese is gone. He really was starving. Ah, I forgot to save some for my friend. It's okay. If I see him around, I'll give him some too. You're not sure if you really mean that. So, why are you breaking the homes for food? By the sounds of it, you might be the lonely one here. Considering who he's friends with. <sighs> Maybe I am. As much as I love my rat friends, it does feel nicer to talk to a natural person that won't run away. Like you. I feel like I can really call you my friend now. Could I offer cheese? Are you sure about that? We just met. And you broke into my house. Maybe it was fate that led me here to meet you. You even knew my favorite food. This is getting kind of weird. You tied this man to a chair not too long ago. Didn't you? No way. You're being irrational, Gabriel. Uh, you may be right. I'm getting into myself. I'm just... So happy right now. Well, isn't that nice? Still, a feeling nags at you that you are incredibly lucky to be in this position unharmed. Go back. Maybe. Huh, maybe you're right. It's been kind of nice just chatting like this. Even how scary this whole situation has been. We're both lonely, I guess. We don't have to be lonely anymore. And... I could get to eat cheese every day. You're starting to wonder if this is about you or about the food. You just want me for my cheese. Are you saying you want to stay here? Gabriel, I don't want a roommate. What about more than just roommates? As in... Uh, not roommates. You said you liked my tail. So I thought... We'll do both. We'll do the rejection one. No, Gabriel, I didn't mean like that. Okay. Alright, I'll give you a chance. Just don't break into my house anymore, alright? Ah, uh, I don't think I'd be able to anyway. I have so much traveling to do, but long distance is fine with you, right? What the hell are you getting yourself into? Gabriel takes a slip of paper and a pen out of his coat pocket to scribble something down. He slides a paper to you. Here's my number. You should call or text me or send pictures anytime you like. I am always available. I promise. You slowly nod your head, not quite processing how quickly this was happening. This man was as lonely as it gets. And considering his friendship values, you doubt his perception of romance is any better. Do you, uh, have any hobbies outside of larceny, eating people? Oh. I can play guitar. I wish I brought it with me, so I can play something for you right now. You can send recordings later. And I am quite good at playing games, such as tag and hide and seek. Noted. I am so happy, Manly. I know I have to go soon, but I am so glad to have met you, even if it meant tying me to a chair. Gabriel hops off his seat and presses toward the front door. Love was clearly in the air. So long, darling. Ah. Uh, bonus ending. Love? But wait, there's more. Click the cheese! Activate Sonic Mode. Y'all yeah, oh boy. Now there's a rat. So that's it for Gabriel. I suppose you will put this in the the genre of uh, there's a quite a few of them that's popped up in the recent years, and they're even in like in cartoons, it's like kid cartoons nowadays a little bit. I notice. Uh, I'll, I'll use one example. I didn't really watch the show. I just know of the characters. It was OKKO. OK I watched like a couple episodes of that, and there was a purple science villain guy, and like the show is. Made, I think it's made for a varying demographic, but like he was clearly designed in a very specific way 
And I think this character here is kind of in that same vein. I'm not sure what you would call this. The evil, evil, sexy, overpowering man genre? <laughs> They're always like horror monsters or like, like killers or something like that. And they usually have like some... They don't, they're not just straight killers, they usually have like a quirky, very specific kind of uh, thing. I suppose you argue it's like a mirror to the Monster Girl uh, series of uh, games and like visual novels and anime and stuff like that. This would be the, the monster men, the monster sexy dudes. I mean, there was that other one where you like, you grew it from like, like a Tamagotchi style one, you, you grew a sexy monster man. So like clearly there's a, there's a demand for this. Uh, this market. Uh, to get back to this though, I, I, I did actually like it. I'm assuming this character is, he, I don't think he was a monster like from birth kind of thing. I, I'm assuming it's, it is kind of a, a Venom-esque character. There's probably like some kind of experiment that went wrong or they tested something on him and now he's, you know, he's parasited. He, he is this goo monster now who makes friends with rats. Can't, uh, come up too much more than that, you know? Just say I liked it, it's, it's simple enough. Like, I, I can't really add it much more commentary-wise. I suppose I could say one thing. I, I did like the character more, um, just because uh, he, he was a monster and antagonistic, but like, he wasn't too predatory, if you know what I mean. Sometimes these games get a little more fervor into that realm, and I think it, it sometimes gets a little bit... Uh, I mean, I have a high tolerance, so it doesn't personally bother me, but, uh, like, if I take my brain out and kind of float it above myself and look at it from that perspective, then I'm like, eh, it's a little, it's a little, you know, a little bit weird. But this one they managed to keep it a little bit clean, you know, you just wanted to eat people or eat some cheese. Straightforward. Anyway. So, thank you all for watching Play Gavriel. I'll see you guys later and take it easy.